There is a logical operator gives students trouble. What's good is that there's only one, and it is implies. And I have noticed this with logic students for a long, long time. They have trouble with implies, at least for a couple weeks. But then it just seems to melt away, they accept it, and it's fine. So I've made this video to see if I can get you over that difficulty with implies. But let's start. What does imply mean in logic? Well, let me tell you a couple things that it doesn't mean. First, it doesn't mean suggests. If I say Bill doesn't want to go to dinner with me Friday night, implies Bill doesn't like me. That may be a perfectly fine statement in English, but it's not the logical sense of implies. All it says is some sort of suggestion of something. We need something different in logic. Secondly, there is no causation attached to our logical meaning of implies. So I can say green is a color implies January is a month, and that is a logical true implication, even though there is no causality in that. It is not the case that green being a color somehow causes January to be a month, and we don't care in logic. So there's no causation suggested when in logic we say implies. We have to have every logical statement have a truth value. Recall, that's the principle of the excluded middle. Everything has to have a truth value. Therefore, we're going to give truth values even in cases when lots of students would say, I don't think it deserves a truth value. We're going to give it a truth value even in those cases. And as I said before, I think after a couple weeks that will seem totally natural to you. Here is the truth table right here. We're going to call in a statement P implies Q, or sometimes red, if P then Q, we're going to call P the antecedent, and Q the consequent. All right, here's the most important thing to remember. The only situation where something is false, and you see it right here, only situation in which the implication is false is when the antecedent is true and yet the consequent is false. We are going to define this to be true every other situation. So just remember, the only time we worry about something is if you say something is true implies something else and that something else is false, then the implication must be false. But any other situations, it's going to be true. In particular, if the antecedent is false, we don't even care about the truth value of the consequent. All right, let's see some examples right here if we've learned this. First one, we're going to assume that if your pet is a dog, then your pet is a mammal. All right, now suppose your pet is a dog. Do we still think that this is a true statement right here? Well, if your pet is a dog, then the antecedent right here is true. We also believe that dogs are mammals, so we also have that the consequent is true. We're in this situation right here, and we're not upset that the implication is true. How about this one, though? Suppose your pet is a cat. Do I still believe that this implication is true? Well, the fact that your pet is a cat means that it is not a dog, so the antecedent right here is false. Yet, it happens that a cat is also a mammal. So, we are in this situation right here where the antecedent is false, yet the consequent is true, and we consider that a true implication as well. What about this one? Your pet is a bird. Now we have that your pet is not a dog, but in fact, since it's a bird, it's not a mammal either. That's this situation right here 
where both antecedent and consequent are false, and we're going to say in that case as well that the truth value of the implication is true. Once again, the only case that we care about being false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. We can't find a single situation, at least in, among these right here, where the pet is a dog but is not a mammal. So, since we can't find that, we're going to consider that this statement right here is a true statement. Now, let's just make sure with one more, one more set of examples. If it's summer in Austin, it will be hot. When it's summer in Austin, that's the antecedent. We believe that that's true. It will be hot. That's a consequent right there. We believe both of them are true. Thus, it's a true implication. If it's in Austin, if Austin is in Texas, Boston is in Massachusetts. Again, true and true. Notice there is no causality right here. No one believes that Boston is in Massachusetts because Austin is in Texas. And we don't care for the logical notion of implication. If both of these parts are true, the implication is true. What about this one here? If the moon is made of green cheese, the sun flashes purple on Saturdays. Well, the moon is not made of green cheese, so the antecedent right here is false. And as we saw from the truth table, that means that the implication is true no matter what the truth value of the consequent is. So, if the moon is made of green cheese, the sun flashes purple on Saturdays is a true statement. However, also a true statement would be if the moon is made of green cheese, the sun does not flash purple on Saturdays. Both of those are true simply because if the antecedent is false, the implication is always true. Let's look finally at this example right here. You might first stare at the consequent right here, square root of 30 equal to 5. Now that's false, and that may give you some difficulty right there. But the only time that the implication is false is when the antecedent is true and yet the consequent is false. Is this antecedent right here true? Well, let's look at it. It says the square root of 4 is equal to 2. That's fine, but it also says the square root of 9 is equal to 4, and that's false. So we have square root of 4 equal 2, true. Square root of 9 equal 4, false. And those things anded together, there's a conjunction of those two, so we know the conjunction of those two has to be false. So we have a situation where in the implication, the antecedent is false, therefore we don't even care whether it says the square root of 30 equals 5 or the square root of 30 is not equal to 5, the implication is true. All right, I hope that gets you through the first step of understanding implication. As I said, for all of my students in the past, two weeks of dealing with this gets you totally past the difficulty, and after that, you're wondering why you ever worried about this. Thank you.